Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 360. We're continuing with our lesson titled Reality Construct. This will be part 4. Scripture teaches to the soul that is open, receptive, the Luciferians will plant the spirit of fear which through the fear construct leads the soul into bondage mm -hmm. it becomes a construct characterized by fear and the person lives a life through which everything is seen from the crucible of fear turn to romans the eighth chapter verse 15 <clears throat> we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear so we see this is the way that this spirit operates that's why it's called the spirit of fear its purpose is to bring into bondage through the crucible of fear that soul which it's targeted yes it says again presupposing it it happened previously uh, yeah everybody in the human race according to ephesians the second chapter okay. is right. under that spirit he's talking to christians that have been delivered out of it and have received the holy spirit he's explaining that this is not a spirit of fear this is not a spirit that's going to lead you into bondage and he goes and explains it the spirit is the spirit of adoption and by where we, we call him father so in that context we see how this spirit operates you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba father so the majority of the human race operates under the spirit of bondage in which those souls that are open to it, receptive to it, receive a spirit of fear. This is a crafting, this is a, a uh, construct which is characterized by the word fear, which basically is interpreted cowardice, timidity, uh, a reluctance to aggressively engage in the things of life it's a, it's an it's a characteristic that brings the person into isolation mm. uh, a state of inertia a state in which <clears throat> all the ability is killed in which the desire to be objective the desire to be aggressive is totally wiped out neutralized so what you get is a receptivity of negativity depression doubt fear uh, unwillingness to see life in a positive aspect everything is dark everything is negative everything is seen through the crucible of negativity that's why it's called the spirit of bondage because it puts an individual into bondage through the fear um, characteristic. I heard that the children who went through the COVID-19 stay-at-home restrictions mm -hmm. are now, or were then, and are now more fearful, less bold, more timid. Don't want to touch. Uh, don't want to touch other children. Don't want to run around and you know grab them and roll around and the, the things that kids sure. used to do sure. prior to, prior to 2019. And we see that that's the spirit of fear that you're yes. talking about. The whole thing was a, um, a crafting of the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Shut down the economy, shut down the, the, the desire of people to aggressively engage. Why? So that they could be influenced and controlled. Which brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the spirit of fear will manifest torment into the life of the soul that influences. 1 John 
fourth chapter, verse 18. There is no fear in love. The perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torments. He that feareth is not made perfect, mature in love. So when he's talking about love here, he's referring to the Holy Spirit, which engenders in the recipient love which is the highest, most powerful force in existence. And it says those that operate under the spirit automatically will shut down the spirit of fear. It will literally neutralize it in the, in the life. <clears throat> the opposite of it, and the way the enemy operates, of course, is to totally capture the individual in bondage to the senses to the physical to the spirit of bondage which will like a spider entwine the individual in a characteristic of fear fear has branches of torment that engender the life they talk about depression they talk about uh people that go into these uh, periods of uh total um isolation the, uh, everything is a fear, fear to go out, fear to drive, fear to talk to somebody. There's a word for it, it's called uh, pantophobia, fear mm -hmm. of everything. Yes. I'm sure it's going to say, maybe in this study right now, fear is motivated, it, it is transversed, it is, it is operational through the thoughts. If you can control your thoughts, you can eliminate the fear. But sure. so when it comes to if love is one of your strong attributes, then all of a sudden your thoughts are a little purer. And so you you have a less of a of a possibility to be influenced by fear. No possibility at all. If you're dominated by love, you're going to be outgoing. You're going to be an individual that's consistently looking from a positive prospect because love does not focus on anything negative. That's why love is able to be bruised, taken advantage of, and never uh, 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 collapse under the assault. Love always springs back. Love is an aspect of life, and therefore fear in the negative aspects cannot uh, 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 ground itself in a life that's dominated by the spirit of love. Mm. <clears throat> but let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the spirit of fear takes away the ability to evaluate life objectively. Second Timothy, first chapter, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. He, every time he talks about this, he alludes to the two sources from which it comes. God gives a spirit of life, of love. The enemy gives a spirit of fear, of bondage. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Now this word power comes from the word <coughs> Dynamis, but in this respect it means ability, capacity, of power and of love and of a sound mind. The word sound there comes through the word which means disciplined. A person who is dominated by a spirit of fear 
has no control factor in his thinking, no discipline. And in that respect, he's not open to objective reasoning. You can't give him a comprehensive understanding because he cannot, he cannot absorb it. His mind will not take hold of positive um, characteristics. The spirit of fear doesn't allow it. In order for the individual <clears throat> to receive objective evaluation, he has to will himself to focus in that direction. The spirit of fear takes away the will and makes the person open to knee-jerk reactions. No thinking, you just act instinctively. And it starts in the thought life. Sure. Definitely. <clears throat> because it's spiritual. <clears throat> Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches those who live in the construct of fear will end in the lake of fire. Revelation 21, verse 8. This is the Father Himself making this declaration. Verse 7, he talks about the overcomer becoming a son. Verse 8, he says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So we see that in this perspective, a perspective, a person who yields to the spirit of fear is putting himself on a course that ultimately will lead to destruction unless he avails himself of the antidote <clears throat> that at some point he objectively is open to evaluating the, the, the direction that he's taking and <clears throat> takes advantage of the promises that he has in Christ, which would deliver him out of that condition. Other than that, he's just going to come under more and more control of the spirit of fear. Does this verse apply to the born again believers yes it's addressed to uh, Christians thank you mm -hmm. next principle <clears throat> scripture teaches before society is judged it enters under the control of a spirit called the spirit of whoredoms the spirit of whoredoms is a spirit that incites deviant behavior in those in the society that are open to it. It is a spirit or the spirit that incites deviant behavior in all the souls of a society that's open to it. Turn to the book of Hosea, 4th chapter, verse 6, right after Daniel. <clears throat> Again, this is addressed to the people of God. It's not talking to outside people who are not under a covenant relationship. My people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected, rejected knowledge. What knowledge? Revelation knowledge. 
I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Yes. As, as you were reading this, the scripture was going through my mind, and I, I want to know, does it connect to this? Without a vision, my people perish. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <clears throat> See, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I would think it would go hand in hand without a vision, my people perish. Well, that's where the, <clears throat> the vision comes from, revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is being open to the Holy Spirit, which gives all vision, understanding, uh, spiritual perception. You reject the Holy Spirit, you're rejecting the whole package. And when a person rejects the Holy Spirit, then they're wide open to other spirits that are going to come in and influence them in totally the opposite direction. And this is exactly what we're experiencing in this society, which is under judgment as we speak. Now drop down to verse 10. We're going to read verses 10 to 12. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. Notice what it does to the mind. This is the influence of the spirit of whoredoms. My people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declareth unto them for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err and they have gone a whoring from under their God. <clears throat> they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense unto the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. Society fra fragments and collapses because it goes away from God's moral lifestyle and embraces a lifestyle that brings it into bondage and ultimate destruction. Yes. What is it? What's the spiritual? Give us an understanding of. Because the shadow thereof is good. Well, it's talking here about their own mind. God, the person of White's VH, is designated places of worship. The spirit of whoredoms has given them other regions and other rationales for going to worship. Their worship forms a little more than orgies. And they're looking for places of convenience in which they can experience gratification on a sensual level in any way in any degree they can so i'm what's coming to me right now is pomp and circumstance they're going about their busyness on the tops of the mountains and this and that the shadow thereof is good so they're it's all it's all a, a contrivance that they're putting together and i think if we were to do something like that we would call it worship no, it's talking about being led away from true worship by a spirit of whoredoms. They're going on the mountains. What are they going to do on these mountains? Well, they're going to do the abominations in the sight of God. Why? Because the spirit is leading them to do that. He says, notice what he goes on to say. The mind is not rational. It says, my people ask counsel at their stocks. They're going to inanimate objects seeking instruction. They're totally demented from reality. They, <coughs> their, <coughs> and their staff declareth unto them. So they're talking about the walking stick. They are basically seeing spirits in inanimate objects. There's hallucination. There's a total 
deprivation of objective reality. Yeah. Should we understand that the spirit of error is diminutive to the spirit of Hordom? The spirit of Hordom is a, the overall intelligence that spawns lesser activities. It's like a hierarchy. Right. And you, what you're looking at here are different influences being given by lower grade spirits. Right. Uh, what will happen, you have a spirit that will incite an individual into rabid fornication, another spirit that incites the individual into homosexual pursuits, deviancy in all its forms, which is exactly what we're seeing in this society. It's yielded, it's gone over to the spirit of whoredoms which is basically interpreted the spirit of prostitution. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, the ability to discern objectively diminishes and collapses. So when, I think it's White H talks about um, Judea and her sister yeah. being, uh, prostituting themselves to the surrounding uh, nations, he's talking about the spirit of order. Yes drawing them away. Matter of fact, it's in Hosea, about another couple of chapters okay. over. The spirit of whoredoms will lead the individual into deviant behavior because it shuts down the ability to evaluate objectively and it replaces it with a deviant desire, uh, a desire that a normal mind would never entertain, but a, a, a mind under this influence will pursue it wholeheartedly. That's why what you see in society today with the non-heterosexual movement <laughs> branches off. You, you, it was originally, when it first started, the gay rights right. activists. Right. Now it's the LGBTQZ right. on on. Why? Because the spirits have influenced and it's branched off into the, the different areas of deviate, deviant behavior. This is, this is common. <clears throat> and uh, this whole aspect of uh, gender awareness and uh, people that buy into that all are operating under a deviant spirit, a deviant influence. Never an objective evaluation. You tell somebody, you determine that you were not what you were born to be, but you're something else, and you buy into that lie, you've bought into a spirit of boredom. Yes. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> Hosea, fifth chapter, verse four. They will not frame their doings. The word frame there means give up. They will not give up their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them. They have not known the Lord. So what happens? You get apostasy in God's uh people they try to bring their religious beliefs into a period of justification mm -hmm. so that they in the subjectivity can justify doing what they're doing and this is a this is a characteristic of the spirit of whoredoms it takes objectivity it <clears throat> substitutes it for subjectivity and in the mind of the individual they can uh, uh, give you a rationale for the most deviant behavior the most atrocious behavior in the sight of God they can give a justification for it isn't it curious then that these people have written a new Bible for gays and lesbians 
to <coughs> substantiate their behavior. Yep. But it's almost as if they are now trying to persuade God himself that their behavior is something he gave them. Oh, sure. They already said that. I was born this way. Mm. God made me this way. And in their own mind, they justify that. The only way you could do that is you have to accept the lie that the scripture is open to evaluation. Right. Not that the scripture is immutable, unchangeable, and you cannot uh, find anywhere in which the word of God ever can be given a subjective evaluation. Matter of fact, turn to the book of uh, Romans, the first chapter. We're going to read verses 21 to 27. Romans 1, 21 to 27. Now this can be applied to the leadership of uh, organized religion. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They were motivated by the desire for influence, control, and power. Knowing God, God's word, they sought for a rationale that would justify them coming out from under the restrictions of God's word and being able to influence people in the direction they wanted them to go because they craved power. They had a spirit within them of whoredoms and the spirit of whoredoms enabled them to craft what would be considered <clears throat> constructs to justify the rationale that they would give the people under their authority. So they're creating their own strongholds within the stronghold. Well, they have a stronghold. Mm. They're expanding the stronghold right. to cover the people that they are an authority over. And in that respect, the first thing that came out was <clears throat> that the, the Word of God can be interpreted to have another meaning that would justify undermining the whole foundation of the body of Christ's teaching. So here in verse 21, <clears throat> we're talking about the principalities and not the physical humans. No, we're talking about man. The, right, okay. So that, so that's we're talking why about people under the influence of the spirit. Right. So back to my original point mm -hmm. they are creating the the humans under the uh, influence of the spirits are creating strongholds within the pseudo reality construct for yeah, themselves yes right what well, this is actually it's the spirit working through them right. that's creating the stronghold through the individual who's creating the ability of a stronghold to be built to be up okay. through the belief system people believe in their leaders They'll follow what they say. Sure. And when you're open to that, you open your soul to be directed, instructed in such a way that you put your spirit, your inner being in peril. A false teacher, a false prophet will lead a person straight to hell mm. because of the belief, the trust that the person has in that individual. So he's wide open. The spirit that's engrafted a stronghold in the leader is now engrafting a stronghold in the follower. And Jesus made the same statement. He said, the blind leading the blind to both fall in the ditch. Why? Because the leader believes, I mean, the follower believes what the leader is saying. Leader's in bondage, the follower's going to go yeah. into bondage. But let's continue. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You've got a uh, um, Benny Hinn Bible. <coughs> John MacArthur Bible, 
uh, they profess themselves. They have the temerity to put their name above the word of God. They make their names larger than yeah. the words of the Bible. So-and-so's Bible. Yeah. <clears throat> So-and-so didn't give the word. God gave the word. That just goes to show that the individual that does that is taking credit over the people that he has influence over. That's the vein in their imagination, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They become an authority unto themselves. Men following men. Well, Spurgeon said this. Calvin said that. Well, what about Jesus? No, 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 no. We, we go by what Spurgeon said or what Calvin said. Yeah. Or what Luther said. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. Organized religion is basically man-centered, not God-centered. It doesn't take its marching orders from the Holy Spirit. It takes its marching orders from the human leadership of organized religion. The megachurch leaders are calling the shots, mm. not the Holy Spirit. Unto an image made like the corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. This is exactly what you have here. Organized religion worships men, giving lip service to the worship of God. The movers and shakers are always considering, well, what does the Pope have to say about this? Mm. Or what does Creflo Dollar have to say about that? Or what does Benny Hinn have to say about this? They're talking about what men say, not one word about, well, we're going to wait on the Holy Spirit to direct us and to guide us and to give us understand. No, you're going to go to this guy and find out what... What does John MacArthur have to say about... John MacArthur says, you can take the mark of the beast and be saved. Big controversy about that. I don't know why there'd be a controversy about it. It's a, it's a blatant a falsehood. The Bible tells you, you take the, you take the mark of the beast, you, you're going to hell. That's, that's the bottom line. End of sentence. But they craft their own interpretations well, salvation um, means that God is always going to be graceful to the sinner that repents. No, he is not. God has a certain line that you cross. You cross that line, that's it. When uh, Samuel spent all night in prayer to YHVH about reconsidering taking the kingdom from Saul, YHVH said, no, I don't care how long you pray about it, that's not happening. He's out of here. He's gone. Mm -hmm. It's a wise VH has a line that he draws. You know, Elohim has a line that he draws. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So here you find the spirit of autumn's deviant behavior. Well, you take a look at the mega church leadership. Did they just? Did they just get rid of T.D. Jake? Yeah. Did they just get rid of Mike Bickle? Um, the um, uh, the, the other guy, a uh, well-known <coughs> mega church pastor, it escapes me now. Uh, basically, um, I can see his face. I can't. Um, um, uh, Tony. Something, I forget his last name. Uh, these are guys, the movers and shakers of mega church. <clears throat> Millions of people follow them. Mm. And in each case, it has to do with a, a scandal, either financial or sexual. And in that respect, they go down because of deviant 
behavior. Romans 1, 21. Well, we're going to shut it down here. We're just about through. But you get the you get the uh, the point. When the spirit of whoredoms is allowed to infiltrate, it is going to influence the leadership and the following to deviancy. Come take it right out of the dependence upon the truth of God's word and substitute it for a lie and take people totally into bondage which will bring upon judgment.